right? Hi everyone, I'm here to talk about Adventure Time Battle Party, which was one of my favorite games. Um, and so I'm just going to talk about the design choices behind it, do a little bit of nostalgia, and just like why I think it's so great, and then hopefully try to make it relevant for a game that doesn't exist anymore, as relevant as possible. So the context of this game is that it existed for only three years on Cartoon Network games. Um, and not sure exactly why it was created, but generally the games are on Cartoon Network are deemed after the show. So it's sort of to promote the show and you know run some ads that are seen by 10 year olds. But it turned out that this was actually one of my favorite games ever. Um, and compared to all the other games that are based on shows on Cartoon Network's website, it's just a much more fully flushed out game that actually made some meaningful innovations. So that's what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, we have to talk about the genre, which is a MOBA. And so my argument here is that MOBAs aren't really a genre. They're really just a specific template of game that exists out there, where you just have a bunch of these uh, elements, um, different terminology that are used almost exactly from game to game, and they're all basically based on Dota, which was the original, it was a mod of StarCraft that became popular and spawned just basically copies of it. And so Adventure Time Battle Party was explicitly a MOBA, which means it followed this template of having three lanes, you have bases, the objective is to destroy the base, there are towers, there's minions, um, and then jungle with monsters that you can kill. So, um, there's nothing too complicated there. Um, I just want to say some of the reasons that I think the MOBA template has been so successful, and some of these are like more why is it popular? And then some of these are like, why I personally find MOBAs entertaining to play, as opposed to other game genres. So the first thing is that, well, I actually have, I have these four categories up here, multiplayer, strategy, RPG, and action. And I think MOBAs are successful because they combine the appeals of all of those into one single template. And so uh, the appeal of multiplayer is pretty obvious um, in that you just feel like it's competitive when you're playing against other people, when there's a matchmaking system. But it also lets you find your own goal, and you don't have to care about all the things that are needed for your team to succeed. You just have to do your role well. And so everyone can kind of find their own niche and express themselves in a way by choosing between a wide range of characters. And then the other three are more like actual game genres, um, where strategy is, I would argue that MOBAs bring in more strategy than things like FPSs, because they are slower paced and third person, and kind of require a little bit less mechanical precision. Like you have auto attacks, which you just click on the enemy and it just start hitting them, whereas in FPS you have to aim every single shot. And so it's got more of like a decision-making aspect to it. Um, while it's still not a just complete strategy game, because you have control over your character. So you're just you're not just optimizing numbers, there are just there are still moments in the game where it's like a fast-paced like action game. And then there are moments that are slower. And then through it all you grow within the game. So you upgrade your character within the game, and then that gives you that feeling of growth that people love from playing RPGs. So you gain gold, which lets you buy items, and then you gain levels. So you become strong, and there's something very intoxicating about that. Um, and then obviously the business model has worked great because it's free to play with skins, and then also eSports by the competitive nature of the game has made like that, I argue that this is like why it's just a template because like that single template just works so well with all these elements that they don't really 
feel the need to change it, at least thus far. And so, now we have some things that aren't so great about mobiles. So, um, these are actually taken off the blog of the lead developer of Adventure Time Battle Park, who was explicitly aiming to fix some of the main problems that he saw with mobiles. And so a lot of these are from the, uh, the perspective of the casual player. So like someone like me, who doesn't go around playing like StarCraft and then moving to mobiles, but rather starts from like playing Mario Kart and wants to play mobiles. And so the things that come as a shock are obviously, you can see right here, people are just really mean. Um, the first 10 minutes of the game, it's kind of that trade-off where you want that RPG vibe, but then as a cost of that, you just have these 10 minutes of just like grind at the beginning, where you're just like last hitting minions. And so that's not very friendly to casual play. Um, and then along those lines, you just have a lot of things you have to deal with. Like, look at this Dota shop. Like, look at all those items. There's no way, like, you can tell uh, what items you want. Like, you're forced to basically look up strategy guides to tell what should I buy. Um, and then the last thing is, it's like 40 to an hour, like 40 to 60 minutes. So, if you want to play a game, you have to like commit a long time. And so, um, let's see. We're gonna talk about why and how Adventure Time solves these problems. But first, we have to acknowledge that they pretty much copied a lot of the basic elements of League of Legends directly. So you can see how even like the character pages are the same. I mean, some of it can be attributed to MOBAs just being such a rigid template, but they also just like blatantly copied um, abilities as well. So effects, mechanics, um, you have the same set of like status effects that Ball has, so like blinding, silence, um, stun, all that. Um, but then again, all the MOBAs existing already copy each other, so it's not really like that big of a deal in my opinion. Um, and it kind of formed a really nice basis for the innovation that comes afterward. So. Um, yeah, here we can see some of the similarities. So this is the 3v3 map on the bottom right for League of Legends called Twisted Tree Line. And then this is the uh, Adventure Time Battle Party map. So very similar. Uh, they even took the altars, or there are three like altars, two towers, um, and then the, the base thingy looks like exactly the same as in Nexus as well. Um, and the abilities, QWD, one passive ability, um, like literally the arrangement is the same. So, um, very much copy. But, we're going to get to why it's better. So, the main innovations relating to long game time and the game being too complicated are really what sets Adventure Time Battle Party apart. Uh, so like, once you start playing, you'll notice that you don't have to deal with mana costs. You only have three abilities and they're always available from the start. And, um, and you don't have gold or items. So this makes the game a lot more simple from the moment you jump in. Uh, you have all your abilities available, so you can do like a full combo on the first fight, and that's like a great experience, as opposed to having to wait till like 40 minutes into the lead game where like you've been grinding the whole time and you get all your items and finally like you can put together the dream combo. Well, like there's three abilities, so that also allows the champions to be like their kits are tighter. And so you just have like three solid abilities that actually interact with each other, and none of them are like filler. Um, and then you can use them right away. And so 
uh, that kind of solves a bunch of problems, but it raises some questions, which is like, how do I, how do I have that RPG feeling of growing throughout the game if there's no goal and no items? And so their answer to this was um, basically you have only levels, and then each time you level up, you get a point that you can spend on a backpack. And so your backpack consists of just five items, each of which has certain stat bonuses. So for example, this potion, you can see, gives you more damage on your abilities. And so if you level up, you can upgrade that potion. Yeah. Wait, so like, does that mean like, so it's not like an item that you use, it's just like a, a, an effect you gain for the rest of that? Yeah, it's just stat. Okay, so what, what are those five things? So in this case, um, this one gives you like some uh, hybrid bonuses, so like both your attack power and your ability power. This one gives you ability power and penetration. Um, these two are like defensive, they give you some ability, some resistance, and some cooldown reduction. And then this one's like health and ability. And so you're maxed at 10 points. So your ultimate form will just consist of two of them being maxed out and two points and something else. That's like the efficient way to do it. But it preserves the sense of like being able to experiment with stuff. Um, like you can choose different backpacks to enter the game with, but then during the game it's like so simple, you just upgrade your thing when you level up, and that's it. Um, and there's also no me calling, so you're just out on the map. What's this nearly ultimate wizard wear thing? Is that just the name of the backpack? Yep, yep, that's the name. Oh, and the backpack itself gives you an inherent buffs? Um, no, it doesn't. Oh, then that's just a summation of all the... Yeah, this is just what your stats are right now. Cool. Yeah. So you have attack power, which is your auto attacks, and, the, and this is your power damage, which is your abilities. And so unlike, um, unlike League, where your abilities... So in League, like, you don't even start out with your abilities. You have to like up, like take points in them, and then like, how do you know what abilities to level up when you level up? Like you have to look, read the wiki. Like it'll be like, oh, this ability's stun duration goes from like 0.2 to 0.25. Like, do it. but the mana cost goes up like 10 points, and it's like a lot of arbitrary stuff. And so here it's like you just upgrade one of these Batman items. So. Uh, and all the abilities do more damage with power damage. Whereas in League, like some abilities might only do more damage with more attack damage. And so you have to like again read the wiki and figure out what your champion does. Like some champions, like it'll be useless to get a certain stat on that champion. But this is like yeah, this is your auto attacks and this is your abilities. And it's very simple and easy to pick up. Um, and then the last thing here is 15 minute time limit. So the, uh, the games that don't end in the base being destroyed get decided on points, which are gained when you kill minions and monsters and towers and enemy champions. And so um, that just makes the game a lot more strategic and less grindy when it gets to like later stages. So, um, if you're winning the game, you'll get a little bit more experience, which means you'll farm, which means you'll be able to level up faster. But uh, if the game goes to like 10 to 15 minutes, like everyone will reach max level within that time. And so if you don't like win quickly, then everyone has a fair shot at winning at the end. Um, if you gain points, and you can't turtle because otherwise the other team would just farm all the points on the map. So. Um, all those simplicity, uh, all those things simplify the gameplay a lot. And there's also simplification that came with the communication in game that I think is actually one of the bigger innovations that Adventure Time Battle Party made. So essentially, a lot of it was a byproduct of the fact that it was made for like 10 year olds. So you can't have 10 year olds like chatting each other and blaming each other online. So um, what, what you have is preloaded options. So over here, like on the bottom left, you can see what 
the champion select chat looks like. Um, you just have some options like I'm trying out a new hero, blah blah blah. So like obviously limits the toxicity level. You can still be passive aggressive, of course, because people will find a way. But it makes it so that uh, it, it, they kind of just preloaded everything that's actually relevant for you to say um, into the options. So over here you see in-game chat. So you can essentially um, see these buttons like one, two, three, four. So those are four different types of paints that you can make by clicking on screen. And so instead of typing in chat like, oh, like why don't you like help me? All you can do is like paint like I need help. And so it's like much more concise, and um, it gets the message across. It also pings the location. So it's honestly, arguably like better than typing in chat. Um, you can't scroll the map either, so there's no like following your teammates around when you're tilted and like watching them fail and getting angry. Like you just have to watch your own character. <laughs> and this is an intentional decision made. Like you can read on the blog. The, the developer, like um, these are all intentional decisions, and then, and the last thing here is yeah, spicy bananas. So like, there's just a sense of humor that like makes a lot of the toxicity go down. Like if someone calls you a spicy banana, that's not toxic. And exactly. <laughs> it's just like exactly. So. This is really angry. It's just spicy banana. <laughs> So um, yeah, and so I found this actually this very perceptive Twitter user, <laughs> who unfortunately only got two likes for this brilliant comment here. But she recognized that Adventure Time Battle Party was actually one of the first games to do this, where no no actual chat is needed, and you can actually communicate effectively by just using preloaded options and things, and so. What you see is like Apex Legends. Um, their version of text chat is voice comms, because I think that's just the norm for first person shooters. And they've been getting a lot of praise for having enough communication methods that you can turn off voice comms so they communicate effectively. And a lot of people appreciate that experience. And so that's something that we've seen before in, in Adventure Time. So uh, now, building on that last point about humor. Um, this is a lot of stuff that, once again, just kind of carry over from the fact that it was Adventure Time themed, so they just imported all that good stuff. But it ended up like doing a lot, like making the game actually a great experience. <coughs> so like some of the things you can see here, um, instead of having like cringy like Dragon Slayer X29 like gamer tags, what you have is like you you select like three. Um, parts of your name from like lists and they're all hilarious like parts of your name so you have like toxic george and um, Slimy bucket. You, you just <laughs> you just have like people with hilarious names um and you have all of the basically the titles and like terminology is converted into like hilarious things like brave hero loyal like who wants like bronze silver like when you can be a master of battle is objectively better. And then you have characters that have real lore, unlike <laughs> the crap that League of Legends tries to call lore. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just incredible. <laughs> I mean, why are you guys laughing? It's like, Speaking it's true. Calm, calm dude, dude, it's, it's barely worse than Overwatch lore. No, no, Overwatch lore is down. trash. No, it's in the dumpster. There you go. Like, Dude, all these is there games. any monster game with good lore? Exactly. This is the only one. That's what I'm saying. That's and really, so, it's the best deal ever game. Not only like, that, I'm so happy. not only that, the skins actually are from the show, oh. and they're like meaningful. Like, you don't have like uh, K-pop like furry skins. <laughs> like, you have actual like. Look, this is like the cat version of Jake the dog that actually appeared in the show and has like a great like different contrasting color scheme um, and has a name, Cake, and like that's a skin right there. And that's like what a skin should be right there. Um, so last point here, 
Um, I'm just gonna let you guys appreciate the music for a brief moment. Um, let me try. Just clicking a shift click. Oh, shift click? Oh, there you go. Oh, maybe. Mm. It's not a bit, so. Oh, it's, it's, it's not still like, paused. Okay, it's paused. Uh, click. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So you'll notice here that we have uh, wallpapers from three different MOBAs, and they look exactly the same. Uh, and they all have the exact same like fantasy, like a little bit of anime sprinkled on top thing going on. Um, which I admit, if you have like the amount of budget to pay for art, you'll make some really good wallpapers, and you'll also have some nice cosplay bands going going off on, on these characters. Um, but what you can't really translate these wallpapers into the actual game that well because it's a 3D game. And so what you end up having is a bunch of these 3D models like interacting a bit clunkily with like the graph the info displays as you can see here. And when there's action it's kind of hard to tell what's happening. It looks kind of cool, like these fireballs, but like, what is happening in there? Like, you just see a bunch of bars and then 3D models. And it's, it's rough. It's rough for someone who didn't come from like StarCraft or something to be able to tell what's happening. So, here's where I would argue that Adventure Time Battle Party uh, represents possibly accidental, but it represents a sort of trend that we see going on. And so I juxtapose these two transitions. So this is from, I think, Heart of the Storm on the top right that I had in the previous slide, and then Adventure Time Battle Party. And then on the left, you see PUBG and Fortnite. And so what both of these bottom screens do is they give you a lot more color and contrast. So it, not only can you objectively like just tell like the difference between things better, but you just feel like it's more accessible because things are just colorful. And it's like the difference between um, the difference between like we were talking about this the other day, but like Microsoft Windows has this like thing called um, jawbreakers, where it's like a bunch of circles, and you swap them around and match three. And then you have Candy Crush, where it's just more colorful, and the things are actually like pieces of candy. And then people just feel more like they can relate to them. So I would argue that when you see something down here, what you see is I am a purple screaming blob fighting against a big yellow dog. That's so much easier to tell than like, Whatever is happening here, like I am, like the character models are so complicated and small, and like the color, like the details are harder to to kind of parse when it's not so aggressively like color scheme. 
Um, so, let's see what we have. So all these things coming together, um, I think, personally, you already know, I thought it was a great game, but you can kind of see that in some of the reviews it got online. So this is like, I don't know exactly how credible GameZone is, but it's the most legit sounding website I found that had a review of this. And the person had a very accurate description, which is basically, it's hard to take it seriously because it's Adventure Time, it's like Cartoon Network, but it's actually uh, something that made people who didn't play MOBAs, yeah, it was something that was enjoyable for people who didn't normally enjoy MOBAs. Um, and then here we have a little thread that's um, one guy who probably didn't play the game commenting about Adventure Time games in general and Cartoon Network. And I will admit that what he's saying here is completely accurate, which is all the Cartoon Network games are actually very shallow, and they're like babies' first games that feel like they didn't really put that much effort into it, except for Adventure Time Battlefront. It was like just so much above and beyond every other game on that website. So for people who actually played it, they realized like, hey, this is actually something special. Like this is a game, this is a MOBA that I don't have to read a, a strategy guide and I can just pick up and play. So just to summarize that here, we've got someone who didn't play the game, probably just heard about it and felt like cringing, and then you have me down here. Not actually me, but this is how I felt. So, um, Unfortunately, uh, the game was maintained. Well, it was first maintained for a while. There was meaning. There were meaningful balance patches, new champions and backpacks. Um, they introduced custom matches. Like, unfortunately, didn't have any friends to play custom matches with. They were all busy playing League of Legends. But um, at the end of the day, uh, site the developers blog cited the fact that servers were changing in Cartoon Network. Um, I would argue that if the servers only supported Battle Party and deleted all the rest of the games, that would be better. But not everyone thinks like me. So uh, we kind of saw like it stopped working with Google Chrome, and then eventually Firefox as well. And then it just kind of died. And so here you have some sad Redditors observing that almost all good things must come to an end. But I think for me it was like the clearest reason I could see that it got deleted was that the reason it was created in the first place wasn't really to be like a standalone title. It was just created by Cartoon Network as like a fun side project. And it turned out to be something special. But it was really just to like I mean it just ran some ads for like candy and lunchables and then like promoted a show that was about to end, like just ended this year as well. So, like the economic motivation was really there. But um, I would like to argue that there are a lot of similar games out there nowadays that kind of borrow a lot of the same innovations that we saw first with Battle Party. For example, Brawl Stars, which is also a 3v3 game. Um, it's on mobile, and so it's not exactly a uh, MOBA. It doesn't adhere to the template like so originally that uh, uh, that Battle Party did, but it has similar, like extremely similar looking like tooltips, um, and it's a three v three game. It has different game modes, but it basically leverages a lot of the same uh, cartoony vibes and like simplified gameplay that make it accessible as a mobile game um, and it's super popular like all my friends are playing it for some reason from high school like, there's literally like a group chat dedicated to this game and so I think you could kind of view this as like an Adventure Time Battle Party version of like shooting games where you just make it more cartoony simplify it and it becomes a lot more accessible so I think that MOBAs as a genre are kind of not um, like market-wise uh, ready for this yet because like all the people playing MOBAs are used to the exact 
have like the exact model that's going on right now. Like you'll see mobile MOBAs like Bane Glory are literally the exact same as like PC. Like they're also they also look exactly the same as Dota and League of Legends. And so I think there's just not enough incentive to change uh, and to make them more accessible. But I think eventually it could happen where if a lot of younger people start playing it um, and then the demographics expand, then I think there might be more incentive to make a lot of the innovations again. Maybe we'll see something similar um, become popular. That's it. Any questions? What do you think of Smite, which tried to like be adjacent as a as like a game? So I mean, it was some innovation, but it's a little kind of different. It didn't follow the template for sure. Yeah, I I think uh, the thing I remember from Smite is like it was like a first person. It was like a uh, it was like a first person mobile where you have only skill shots, right? Like yeah, kind of. Also, the art style is a bit different since you like play as like mythic gods. It looks like League of Legends. It does. I mean, it still does. Uh, so yeah, I think Smite is like an example, maybe like a rare, rarer example of like diverging somewhat. But like, it didn't take off the way. I, yeah. I think. Well, I mean, Battle Party also didn't take off, but I think it didn't really do the same thing, where it kind of just moved into a zone between first-person shooters and MOBAs. So it doesn't really become more accessible to the casual player, in my opinion, in the same way. Because, it, I mean, one of the things that MOBAs uh, have as an advantage is like the third person perspective. Like the reason I don't play FPS is because first person makes me dizzy. So um, I think it kind of, I mean, it's a different direction. It's a different take on it. Um, I think it's like moving into the middle rather than moving one side. That's good. Any thoughts? Any questions about how the game worked? In case I didn't like explain no, it. No, I, I found the website. It's not, well, it's not working on mobile, obviously, but the website's still up there. Yeah. It's yeah. really cursed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really sad. I can't believe they just let it die. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like there. Like, here it is. Yeah, okay, exactly. About game guide champions. Tournament. Yeah, you'll see like it, it actually spawned like a pretty um, dedicated community on Reddit. Like people were pretty sad to see it go and yeah. Alright. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on so like these kind of games or any kind of media honestly? Um, for the longest time, whenever you're dealing with a younger demographic, people were kind of, I don't know, underestimating children, I think. There were moments where it's like, oh, it's fine if like the animation's not great. It's fine if it's, if the game's not fun. Plus, all those, the like, other games. yeah, like, yeah. you can't even call them games. These, like, <laughs> mini games on the website. I, I just looked up, like, the Cartoon Network website for games. And again, they still have this website filled with these half-baked games. However, I've also been noticing that there's other titles that Cartoon Network has been publishing as separate games that yeah. you just buy. There's like, it seems that there's an... Steven Universe? Yes, there's an RPG kind of game um, in Steven Universe, and there's a, the OKKO's, OK um, I guess, beat em up Kind of like side-scrolling, beaten up kind of game. So it's like, do you think this is profitable? Like it seems that they're doing more stuff. So yeah, dude, um, never underestimate people's propensity to make money off of children. I think they, uh, once again, it's like it's economically determined. So I think they just decided that MOBAs, like the demographics, kind of locked in, whereas those games are like specifically mobile targeted, I think. Um, so they're more likely to sell under like the business model that mobile games work. Like I think the Steam Universe thing is like one of those like team building 
like turn combat. Only. Yeah, it's a turn based it's, game. Yeah. You, you mean like an RPG? Yeah, it's basically an RPG, I think. It's like more discreet, though. It's like one of those RPGs where you like follow a path. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe we just need to. I guess that is an RPG. Dude, an yeah. even more baby version of Fortnite. Dude, what's like. What's like a genre of video game that doesn't have like a baby version? Like I'm thinking, like the tactical RPG. Like there's no baby version of that, right? When we were talking about a grand strategy. Oh, but like. Well, they already is. That's it. Sid. Oh, my Sid is grand strategy for children. Right? I mean, if you go, if you go below Sid, say. Well, yeah. Well, then, below Sid, like. Below Sid was like digital game, board though. games. Digital board games. Maybe. Yes, actually, don't. Games. I don't want to see board games where it's at like Risk and like. Uh, yeah. Like Axis and Allies, and stuff. And those are like, I guess, the equivalent. The problem is like, no one wants to play like Risk on a computer. Like, okay, I remember. So I used to put like an, an addicting games on Cod. You can Google a game called World War, which I played a lot when I was young. And it was like, it was like literally, like literally more baby than Risk, somehow. Yeah. And like that was. Fun. I think I played that game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you pull it up right now, you'll remember. That's yeah. the game you don't forget. What's it called? Like for, example, okay, like, for example, there was a game, an addicting game called, um, oh my god, it's called like, Kingdom Conquest or whatever. And basically the way it worked was like, you had like a series of rows and you could spawn different troops on oh, the row. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, that game was sick. I actually played it over break again. Actually, no, I played it two weeks ago, so I replayed it real quick because I remembered it. Yeah, I'm, that's why I didn't go to sleep that one night. Um, and uh, it was really fun. It still, like, still holds up. The gameplay is pretty, super simple. You go into like four things. But like it works, and it seems like a really good like babies for strategy game kind of game. Because it's still like a shop where you buy new units and you have to make reasoned decisions. The point you're making with graphics is really interesting though. Because like, you're right, like the reason I never got to mobile is because I just looked at the game, like this doesn't look like a video game. This looks like, this looks like the worst part of the spreadsheet. It's a weird on, like, like an art mashup when yeah. you actually get into the game. Like, uh, like when, when I look at, when you look at a grand strategy game, they look a lot more simple than they actually are. Like I showed you the screenshots. Some of them look bad, but some of them are just like a map and like a menu, right? And like obviously there's a lot of complexity going on, but the way that those games present themselves, even games like Civ or World World at War or whatever, the way they present themselves is very simplistic and intuitive. So I think that maybe a lesson you can draw from adventure type battle parties that when you're making a game like a MOBA, the way you also present the elements of the game is very important. Like. I don't know, maybe there's no science on this, but I imagine that the way League presents itself, unless you're really into it, is like not appealing to people who don't usually play those kind of games. Yeah. Like for a first person shooter, it's very intuitive how you play the game. Like at most of a map on the top right and on the top bottom with the bottom right, and, but like it's obvious what you do. But with League, I look at those pictures and I'm like, what is happening on the screen? It looks like RuneScape, but like I'm looking at it through like, little, like, like drunk goggles, you know? Yeah. Like what is happening? When I started playing League, it took me like a month to figure out like where my character was on the screen. Like I would keep losing it. I was like, where am I? Yeah, where did I go? <laughs> like moving the screen around is one of the most challenging like, things. If your eyesight is not, if you're not like looking at it constantly, I was like, where am I? Who is this? Who is that? Like what is yeah. going on? It's, it's impossible. Did you enjoy League? Did you do, do you? I got League? severely addicted to League of Legends. For like a year and a half. Oh, really? It was pretty bad. Well, we're here now. But I am recovered. We've made it. Did anyone else like play a lot of League or have these two? Or? I played like one game and I was like, I have no. <laughs> Just, yeah. yeah. Dude, that's the thing. Yeah. It's, it's not for me. Two, two, two of our roommates no, uh, were, were like horribly addicted to League in high school and they both quit this year. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, remember George deleted his account and like, re he like made his password random so he could never log back in. Like, yeah, like it was pretty. Cause, cause, because because he did that before, he did it, he deleted, and then he found a way to get back in. Like, can you just change the password? No, no, no. But he remembered what the password was, so he got back in. No, so if you just, change the password to a random password, you can just change it again. Well, no, no. no just I, I, forgot no, my he, password. He like ran a program that like made the password something you could never guess. No, but if he just you for, I forgot my password. Oh yeah, I, I guess uh -huh. he did. I think he like deleted it off his computer though, and like and like prevented his computer from downloading it. Like he like went full hard. Like you, know, George went like super hardcore and scrubbing. Like he's he's never gonna pick it. Like Sam can still play it again, but George is like. Well, so, so, fine. Here's this 
storm. Oh yeah, Sam does Hear the Storm, and also Magic the Gathering. So I guess he's never really left Degeneracy. <laughs> oh, hey Sam, you guys know Sam, he's in our club. I forgot. <laughs> but I forgot what's I had a friend who really tried to get me into League, but I could not follow the screen. I hate the screen. Dude, Dude, I, hate the I hate the art style in general. Like everyone's like dressed as if they're like yeah. not dressed. Yeah, like it's literally cosplay bait. I think. Yeah. I think the gold, yeah. the gold, like or the or it's or it's horny bait. Well, it's gross. It's wheat bait. I was always Timo because it was. He was so small that right. I would always know who he was. Which like, I would never get confused and be like, where am I? Because I'm like, oh, I'm Timo, I'm tiny. Like, I'm half the size of the other character models. I can actually figure out who my character is. So you're like an invalid party? You can't move the screen. So you're always in the middle. And it's fair because no one else can... How do you spell that character's name? Oh, it's C-E-E-N-E. Ah, I see. This one. Ah, yes. Like, I wouldn't get confused because it was... Very easy to tell him apart from other character models. You, you, you know, I feel that way about Overwatch low key. Like, whenever I watch Overwatch, because I, I don't know how the game works, I like cannot understand what's happening. But I, I watch a game like Call of Duty, it's like super obvious, which is why I actually really like old traditional first person shooters, which I know makes me kind of weird. But, uh, but like, I like those games, so I guess it's, again, it's important to make sure your game presents, like, for example, if you show like that Fortnite screenshot or like or even like any first person shooter screenshot that is Overwatch like a normal person, they will understand what's happening. Like two person has no experience with like the average human on Earth. But like if you show a league screenshot, like, yeah, yeah. Even grand strategy I think has an intuitive nature because you, you just have a map of the world and like oh France has a bunch of land. Yeah, there's an army over there. I don't know Overwatch. So like the main problem with Overwatch, uh, with what they had, was almost the opposite of what League has, where in League, everything is dark until you, like, activate it. Yeah. The bottom left is League, actually. Yeah, so it's like, you just see all these abilities, but you never see the character. Now, in Overwatch, everything is bright. Like, even the characters are bright, it's even their abilities are bright. But like over time, they made some adjustments. Like they m- took away some details and stuff. I don't know. It, you be the judge of like, see like a o- Overwatch game nowadays and see if it makes any difference or not. Uh, I think fighting games are usually the games that are best at like getting visual information. Well, like one-on-one fighting games. Yeah, like some Street Fighter, even Smash Bros. I think is pretty good as long as they're not like more than four people. Um, so I think yeah, like. I think yeah, yeah the just, amount of people has something to do yeah. with it as well because like when it's a one v one fighter you can pretty much always tell which one you are because there's only two it's people yeah, but like, like five but yeah it's like five, it's especially like, when like Overwatch it could be teams I believe it's six v six if I'm correct maybe that's like twelve different models on screen to like it's like jumping and exploding. and they all like pop their alts at the same time and then, then they, they like they like have like minions or whatever like the robot <laughs> yeah, yeah like the, the yeah. turret Overwatch. stuff well, I think uh, yeah, yeah like the national 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 robot that's relevant because I think. Three people is like the minimum, or yeah, the minimum. It was three v three for this kind of. Yeah, um, it's <laughs> like the good. it's the smallest number you can have while it's still being like a team game. Yeah. I feel like and three v three is optimal. Yeah, it per- per- preserves the team <laughs> aspect and then makes it easier for you to be relevant as well. Because in league, like you might do really well, but like if four people fail, then like, there's no chance that you can win. But which it just increases the toxicity. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So I think three is like what actually like for the for all for all stars is also three. So it's, it's like a, it's like a dude for all star that picture reminds me of the wait no never mind it's not like, what it reminds me of the tank game that we played I don't know if you guys ever played that game oh yeah, I, yeah. dude we have, I have to beat that at some point <laughs> huh well it's weird like. Of course, more characters, more things moving on the screen complicates things. But look at a game like TF2, where right. it's like 12 beat 12 usually. Like I think a casual match is like 24 people, on, and like there are servers out there that support 32 on both sides. There's only a few servers that do that. But I like, feel <laughs> like I feel like when it comes to TF2 versus Overwatch specifically, TF2 is better specifically because 
there's a lot of difference in the red versus blue like color schemes. Like Overwatch, if I remember correctly, is just like the outlines and your tags. TF2, your entire outfit is either red or blue. So you can just see that like instantly when you're looking at it. Also, when it comes to Overwatch, it's like abilities and stuff. You like there's like these glowing blue orbs and like these explosions and stuff, and like lasers going everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. But in TF2, it's just like you're shooting. Yeah, there's, there's, there's not as much like things that aren't like assigned to a specific character. Yeah. Like in TF2, like the crazy stuff is like a spy. Yeah, and like yeah. Or the medic. I the guess. medic, like I guess, there's like a laser beam, but it's always connected to someone. So. Yeah, but like in Overwatch, is like. Like arrows flying across the screen, and like, <laughs> yeah, people like tele tracer freaking teleporting across the map. Like it's a lot. I think the most confusing thing I was ever in was when like Zenyatta had popped his all, and like Zarya had also popped their all. So it was like in Zenyatta like glowing gold orb within the Zarya like blue orb. <laughs> like, what is happening I was just right like, now? And went through like a flashbang or something. <laughs> That's kind of like the problem with the new Call of Duty games these days. Like the last good one, in my opinion, was Black Ops 2. After that, when they started getting like power sliding and jetpack, and, like, started getting off the ground and like people had laser swords, things got so complicated and complex it became like, I, I mean, I just, I just want to point at the screen and shoot people. Like, mm. oh. like I don't want to freaking like play Deuce X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to play 15 minute Nova. Dude. You, Kendall, your goal in life should be to resurrect Adventure Time Battle Party. Like, become an investor at Adventure Network and be but like, But the show's I'm, over. Oh, you're right, the show's dead and it's over. Wow. All right, then just build a new one. I mean, we're video game developers, so... Have you heard of this so. game called uh, Heroes, City of Heroes? Have you heard of that game before? No. You've heard of it from me, because one of my friends in middle school was super into it. He played the game for about six years of his life. And, and, and like, literally every single day, like, this was like... If, you, if I were to rank like the three things about his personality, he used to be number two during this era. He never stopped talking about it, right? And then they shut it down in like the seventh grade because it was purchased by the Koreans or something. And, uh, and this kid was like literally depressed. Like it freaking destroyed his life. Like he like didn't he like didn't he like missed school for three days and like he was not okay. And they were like they're making a reboot and he's like still invested in the reboot like eight years later. Actually no, yeah, eight years later. So. Um, like, these kind of old games that exist for only for a period of time can be pretty, pretty brutal, I think. They're just dead forever. Like, what's another game? Like, wasn't there like a Lego game, like a Lego MMO game? I know, one of my other friends who moved to Indiana was really into that game. This is what, um, the psychiatrist was saying. It's like when our generation gets, like, a lot of money, like, what are we going to spend it on? We're going to, like, get an adventure time battle for like, yeah, well, server or something. Is, is that even, like, better than buying a fancy yeah, no, actually no, though. It's, I, I, I won't do it. it. I, will, I will sit back and appreciate my slideshow and say that I appreciated this game. You remember the memories? How much did you play it? I played it a lot. I was pretty high emo. I was probably better at it than any other video game. How old did you rank? Were you purple at any point? Let's see. Um, how high did you get? Were you purple? I, I like how every Everyone's rank is teal. pretty positive. Damn, you were so close to purple. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Good stuff. <laughs> okay. Alright.